اهلا وسهلا اهلا بك يا طالبي Welcome to Text and Translation um, Fahim Idais was my Arabic professor when I was at the Air Force Academy many moons ago Yes And uh, we reconnected when we were both teaching at Austin Community College um, I, I was teaching Spanish and you were teaching Arabic That's correct um, Are you still working at ACC? I am, I think that was a long time when we, when we reconnected it it's been a few years, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has. Yeah, and but then the you di then you disappeared. I don't know what happened to you. <laughs> I was st I'm still there. <laughs> I, yeah, I moved on, but through the magic of Facebook, we were able to catch up and got together recently. And and I thought you would be a great candidate to tell us about the Arab American experience, uh, having moved here to Texas a while back. Um, so give us a little summary of uh, where you came from. Sure. I, I hope I can remember the Arab experience. <laughs> I do. I am right now in the American, you know, actively enjoying the American experience. It's been a long time. I left Palestine in 1972. I spent the, uh, my high school three years of high school in Ramallah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not from Ramallah, from a little town north of Ramallah. It's between Ramallah and Nablus. It's called Sinjin. The name of the town is Sinjil. Mm -hmm. And, but I went to high school in Ramallah and that was during the occupation, the Israeli occupation. And it was, you know, the nine, as a result of the 67 war. So my, from 67 to 70, that was the my three years in the Ramallah. Wow. So it wasn't a fun, obviously fun time. Going to high school during that time was a little bit of a challenge, especially traveling between the village and the and the high school, the city. And so uh, when I graduated there from high school, I decided I wanted to go someplace and. Uh, I uh, had a brother that lived in Jordan, okay. very close, Yeah. So and managed to be admitted at the University of Jordan. They actually, for that was the first medical school, they just opened the medical school, medical school right after I graduated from high school. So I was admitted to medical school at the University oh, I of know. Jordan and I thought, well, this is great. Cool. So, <laughs> uh, I, you know, went to Jordan and I lived with my brother and his family for a year and a half. Uh, Jordan wasn't any better. <laughs> there was a lot of problems between the Palestinians and the Jordanians, uh -huh. King Hussein, and so there was a civil war in in those in the early 70s, 70, 71, when I was there. It was also a tough year and a half that I spent there uh, dealing with, with that. So I decided there must be a better way of, of doing things and going to school without having to be, you know, politically and, you know, involved in all these problems. Mm -hmm. So I ended up uh, coming to the U.S. My dad was here. My uncle actually applied for my dad to come over here. And the main reason for that, because then my dad can apply for us, his, okay. his children. He sponsored you? He sponsored me and I was the first one to come after my dad sponsored me. My dad didn't spend a whole lot of time here. He actually just came to, he got, you know, he was a permanent resident. Mm -hmm. He sponsored me, I came here and he left uh, shortly after that. So- And you came to Texas? I came to San Antonio. I lived in South, San Antonio with, I still remember this beautiful lady, 80 years, 84 years old, a Lebanese lady that had a house on Sass Zarzamora in, in Texas. <laughs> and she was kind enough to give me a room. She had a separate room in the back of her house. Mm -hmm. So I li lived with her, she fed me, and I went to a community college. I went to, uh, San Antonio College. Oh, cool. Well, I lived with her for a couple of years. So you must have already spoken English at that point. Uh, I, you know, I had good functional knowledge because I took it in high school. I took it three years in high school. 
Uh, but obviously, I had to get used to the Texan <laughs> way of speaking From English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, it it took a little time. So when I I actually started school a couple of weeks after I got here, after wow. I got and uh, like I, said, I was, oh I went <laughs> I I had no choice. That was the only thing I I came here for. So I. Went to San Antonio College, like I said, and I I remember me trying to hide in the class, just sit in the back, and hopefully, and I wouldn't be called <laughs> on because I. You That's know, how I was in your Arabic uh, class. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I managed there. I did actually very well in all the science and math, and because they didn't require a whole lot of oh, English. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, and and actually at the University of Jordan, they taught those subjects in English, so oh. I had. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm used to that, but I remember I had a sociology class that I had really a tough time yeah. following it. So lots of reading. Yes, yes. So I'm just curious um, because I haven't studied Arabic in a long time. But uh, your your hostess, your landlord, who was Lebanese, um, would you speak Arabic with her? And was it pretty similar to your dialect? Yes, yes. She had a. a it, it's the Levantine dialect, you know, Lebanese, Syrian, Jordanian, Palestinian dialect, they're all about the same. So okay. uh, she was a wonderful lady. She actually lived in Mexico before Texas, mm. and her her husband was uh, originally from Lebanon, but he obviously was a Mexican uh, citizen, and he was oh, an yeah. ambassador for, for the uh, Mexican government. Wow. Yeah, and re they retired, and he they ended up in Texas. Huh. And so... Mrs. Latouf, her name. I, yes, Mrs. Latouf. What a wonderful lady. It's just That's a lovely beautiful. lady. Yes, did yes. Did she do the cooking too? Very, yes, <laughs> very kind. She did. I did the shopping for her. Yeah. And I walked. I didn't have a car, but they were an HEB right, you know, near her house. So I would walk and yeah. and go, you know, do the shopping for her. I helped clean the house when she needed it. Yard work. I don't remember having a whole lot of yard work. They, they, I think the backyard was didn't have any grass or anything like that. Yeah. So it was, no, I didn't do much yard work. And the front yard, it was like, like a courtyard. It, was, it didn't have much to, to do really in there. Well, some of the people I interview on this on this show, I call this my show. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, a wonderful. They've just gotten to the U.S. recently. They've been here a couple months, and so they're still going through culture shock, and they're still identify more with their home country, but you've been in the U.S. now most of your life. And so I wonder if you can think back to when you first got here, what some of the, the strange things were that you had to get used to, some of the ways you had to adapt culturally. Mm, uh, the, I was impressed going to H-E-B. Yeah. I couldn't get over <laughs> the fact that you can find anything that you want in one place. <laughs> Where you don't have to run around and get so convenient. Yes, very. Yeah. They didn't have supermarkets like that back home. No, no, not at all. I was also surprised by the fact that people didn't just walk around with no mission or purpose for doing uh, something. Like I know when I came, where I came from, people just walk with each other on the street. They just stroll down, up and down the street, just talking, yeah. doing nothing. So when, when I would stay at the house with Mrs. Latouf, I would look outside and there would be nobody. Lots of cars going around, but yeah. there are no people. Uh, there are not a whole lot of people would come and visit her. So it was kind of a, a cultural, very different because I know where I grew up, my yeah, house you drop by and see your neighbors from from the early morning till evening you know, people are there and we're you know we're going to see somebody and so <laughs> it was it was yeah kind of a little I, I felt a little lonely uh, at yeah. the beginning like it worth uh, do you have uh, family do you have friends do they come to see you do, and there was none of that so that, that was more isolated it, it, it is it was more isolated but as as <laughs> we get into the culture it, it's time is is money in in this country you know uh, you know when you do something when you go with your car you're doing you know and you know then you dedicate time 
if you want to go to the uh, park or if you want to go do something fun with your family, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you plan that and you do it. That's not the way it works over there. You know, if fun just come at a, you just at, at a moment notice. It's just it's like part of your daily routine. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's have fun right now. Yeah. So, but yeah, those are the things. The, uh, I started, like I said, I started college immediately after I came here. So uh, I had to adjust to that. It was, you know, uh, San Antonio College was a big, big school. They had lots of students in there and, and being, I don't remember actually meeting anybody that spoke Arabic at, at that time, but, you know, I had to practice and be, you know, get in there and actually, you know, survive and, and, yeah. and, and I noticed they were very, very friendly. You know, that when once you got to right. <laughs> Texans, they are, and still, I can still say that Texans are probably the friendliest people of the, wherever I've been in the state here, yeah. is always, I miss the, the way Texans deal with each other. Oh, good. So that was a good thing. Where else have you lived? I lived in Colorado. I, where we met. Where we met at the, and uh, I miss the place. I, I do not miss the cadets. <laughs> it is, it is uh, you know, I, I have many friends like you and uh, that we keep in touch and they have done marvelous things. But when I was there, it was uh, the way of life was a little different for cadets. It's, it's very, very structured and that kind of goes against yeah. the way I like to operate. I don't like... I don't mind being formal when it requires, but it was structured and formal all the time. Yeah. And that was even just like when a cadet would come to my office, you know, I remember they had to salute and they have to report. And right, I just right. always thought that is just overdone. <laughs> you know, I've, I've just seen this cadet in my class and now coming to my office, you know, they have to do this. So, right. yeah, so it was wonderful. Colorado was a great, we spent a lot of, most of my Air Force career was in Colorado at the uh, Air Force Academy there. And we lived on the academy and it was beautiful, obviously. And I also was assigned to Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. Okay. And, and that's when I got involved in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. I actually was there. That's when I used my Arabic really where I had to go there and translate and because my job there was to host, uh, to uh, negotiate with host countries, Middle Eastern countries to do exercises like Bright Star and all these with Jordan, with Saudi Arabia, with Egypt. We did a lot of planning and we did a lot of exercises. So when the war yeah. broke there, when Saddam did his thing, we en ended up deploying one of the first ones to actually deploy because I was familiar with that. So ended up being in Saudi Arabia there. So uh, I, I visited other states, you know, been to Washington, D.C., I've been to Virginia. I have a lot of relatives that live there. Yeah. Uh, but your wife is from Texas, right? She is from San Antonio, yes. How did you meet? Uh, in, in San Antonio, we met in college. I, she went to a university of Incarnate Word there, and I went there for my undergraduate. And then I went to Trinity University in San Antonio and joined the Air Force after that. So we met at the University of Incarnate Word. And now you have two sons? I have two sons. They're Nathan and Neil, 40 and 34 years old. So yeah. Do you have any other family that's here in the U.S., like on your side? Oh, yes. We, we have, we live right, uh, you know, off 35 North, uh, all the way to Dallas uh -huh. and South, where do we go? I guess San Antonio. So I have brother, two brothers in Austin. I have one brother in San Antonio, and I have a lot of cousins in San Antonio. I have one brother, one brother in Temple, and I have uncle and cousin in in uh, Dallas. And I have a cousin. I don't know if you've heard of her, Naomi. She had nine. She's a very known poet, national. Poet. She writes books huh. and uh, Naomi Shihab. Ni Naomi Shihab Nye. Shihab Nye. Yeah, and you can look her up. She's she's all over the place. She's uh, cool. yeah. She goes 
I think she's a visiting prof- distinguished visiting professor at Texas State right now. Yeah. So do you think um, the climate in Texas is similar to Palestine and Jordan, it, or is it is it hotter there? It uh, no, it's hotter here actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we in Jordan and Palestine, you experience four seasons. You actually have. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you have the final. You have you actually have winter. And it can get cold, real cold. And they've been getting actually snow for the last couple of years. This last year, uh, my sister said it's been unusually cold. Right. And you have summer, which can get, but it's a, it's, it's dry heat. Yeah. It's, you know, when I visit there, I normally go there during the summer. And it's even though it's hot, it's not as it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And yeah. so you can act, it's dry heat. And you have the fall and you have the spring. So... In Texas, we have what do we have? Summer <laughs> and, then and win, a couple the, weeks of winter. A couple of weeks of winter in there. And by the way, I like that. Though I do yeah. like the hot weather. I I am not a fan of uh, cold weather at all. Yeah, I um I liked uh, Colorado winters for the first couple of weeks. I'd go skiing, and then I was about November. I was ready for it to end. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I we my wife especially did not like Colorado because of the weather. It was it was cold for it too, too long. long. Exactly. Well, when you have a family come out and visit here, and you want to give them the Texas experience, where do you take them? To eat barbecue first. <laughs> Which barbecue do you like? Uh, well, the one I really lately been going to and, and ordering from is the one uh, downtown, which is considered to be one of the best barbecue in the nation. It was ranked. Uh, let me see, what's the name of it? It's down on 11th Street. Uh, goodness. Is it the one where people stand in line yes, for hours? Yes, and, hours? I, and I did that. I did that. <laughs> That's where Obama ate when he came to visit Austin. Yeah, what's that called? I haven't been there. I was like, really? Yeah, it's... Uh, Can it be that much better? But it was? <laughs> no, it really... It, it was good. It, it was, was really fine. good. But if I eat that Rudy's, then it's also good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's not really... But barbecue is one because they love meat. So I think that we would probably... I, I take him to yeah. to do that. We, you know, we obviously visit if... Depending on their age, we visit if they're young and they like to see... You know, we go to 6th Street, and I, I tell them this is not one of my favorite places to hang out at this point, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but yeah. we, we do that. We go to, uh, what's the, uh, obviously the uh, capital, you know, down downtown, and we go to, you know, show them that museums, you know, museums around that we, that they like to see. Yeah. Uh, about San Antonio. The, San Antonio is is a lot more. We we sure uh, yeah, there's a lot more to see the the river, you know, mm-hmm. and the Alamo, and we you know uh, the uh, the museums and the historic places, especially south uh, in San Antonio there, and uh, Mexican food is obviously, and they they really for some reason they do like Mexican food when mm-hmm. they. I'm I'm okay with it once in a while, but they love Mexican food when they when they come here, especially. You're okay with Mexican food once in a while. Once in a while. Once in a while. I can't get enough. Once in, is that right? It, it's like Arabic food, you know. I, I miss it, but yeah. when I eat it, I don't want to eat it for a long time. You know, I, I want to miss it again. Oh, okay. It, it's just so Mexican food. I do crave it, and I want to eat it, but after a while. When you want when you want Arabic food in Austin, where do you go? Uh, the uh, the Masi is one of the ones I go to. Yeah. They, there's a fancy place downtown. It's called Abba, which Abba. in Hebrew means father. Father. Yeah. And it's uh, so it's a more of a fancy place and more of a special occasion, special occasion <laughs> type thing because you end up spending a little bit money down there. But it's really good. The food is is good. Phoenicia, Phoenicia Bakery. Yeah, I've been there. It's uh, you know they have. Sandwiches, uh, probably the most authentic that I found here, mm-hmm. where you can have a, a falafel sandwich or a shawarma sandwich. And I went there for falafel the other day, and the food counter was closed. I don't know if it's um, which one the pandemic pand- at Phoenicia. The, yeah. Yeah, on Burnett or down? Yeah, Burnett. Burnett. Yeah, they had one also on South Lamar. 
Okay. Yes. And, and they're serving meals? Uh, you can order, not not a big uh, to do, not a big place to sit, yeah. but they, you, you can, can order. Go. Yeah, you can order and you, they have a little place where you can sit and eat. Okay. I, I lived in Saudi Arabia for a while and would eat falafel just about every day. Is that right? You like <laughs> the, falafel? The, the, the Lebanese falafel shops are really good. <laughs> yes. And, and Phoenicia, they actually do what they call the uh, uh, Lebanese style falafel sandwich. Uh -huh. And which is really good. Like I said, it's the most authentic French one. French fries? Uh, yeah, they have French fries too. You like the French fries? They, they call them uh, chips. They, they would put the French fries inside the, the sandwich. They, they, yeah, Lebanese yeah. style, I guess. That's the, the, they don't do it at Phoenicia. I imagine if you ask them, they may, they may do it. Okay, now my mouth is watering. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got a couple of old-fashioned Texas expressions here. Oh my goodness. And I want you to give your best guess what you think this means and whether it's a good or a bad thing to say to somebody. All right. Okay, what would it mean if I said, it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. <laughs> My my grandmother in law used to say things like this. Grew up out in rural Texas. Wow. I guess uh, if if you're <laughs> if you're if you're hurting, <laughs> I imagine you, you can say that to someone to make them feel a little better. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good application. I think I think that makes perfect sense. The, uh, the dictionary I looked this mm -hmm. up in says it's a synonym for something that's acceptable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're not if you're not feeling good about something, you can tell them, oh, you know, think if that other thing happens to yeah. you, so you're, you're okay. It's like it's better than nothing. <laughs> it's it's better than, yeah, okay. Well, that was close. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay, here's the second one. She's more slippery than a pocket full of pudding. Uh, I guess somebody that's uh, you can't catch them on anything. They they manipulating yeah. someone that just uh, you know what do they used to call uh, slick <laughs> slick 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 Willie slick Willie. <laughs> so she's a slick whatever her name is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they they define it as dishonest, but I think you you explain it better. <laughs> <laughs> More slippery than a pocket full of pudding. <laughs> Ask your wife, maybe she's heard that one. Yeah, she probably, well, now who, who said that? That these sounded pretty good, actually. Yeah, these were in um, Texas Monthly. Yeah, wow, wow. You know, her, my uh, mother-in-law is really, fr really, really from Texas. And mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's from Gon Gonzales, Texas. Yeah. One of those. And I use, she used to say things, and her dad also, my wife's dad, used to say things that I would laugh at. I can't, you know, think of some of those things now. But, this kind of expression. But those remind me of what, you know, they would say, you know, it's just uh, yeah. crazy. Actually, some of the stuff I probably don't want to say on camera. <laughs> this is a family show here. It's a family show, yes. Some of the things that I heard from her father, I wouldn't repeat. Yeah. Are there, where you grew up, are there a lot of old uh, expressions too in Arabic? Yeah. Traditional yeah. sayings? Sure, sure, and uh, there I think some common the say, common with the English with our sayings mm -hmm. here, you know, equivalent, equivalent, to, you know, about the same thing. Uh, I don't know if there, there's a saying that says, uh, "You and your brother are against your cousin, and you you uh, you and your cousin against uh, you know." A stranger. I don't know if that you know. Yeah, that what does it mean? It means like uh, you know you can you can fight with your brother, uh -huh. but if you're then if your cousin gets involved in it, then you become then you're a, allies. You're, you're, you're allies. You become a team and against uh. your cousin. And if somebody else gets involved, then your cousin become your ally, and you you know yeah, that's deep. You, you go against them. So, but there I, I've heard some you know. During the uh, that I think is the same as let me think of one. Uh, there is one in English that you that you say in Arabic. It says 
like I, I was teaching this student, he was in my Arabic class, yeah. and his parents are actually professors, and he was taking my class at ACC, and he didn't do too well. So his stepmom yeah. wrote me an email. And she speaks Arabic. She, she speaks Arabic, uh, she's a professor, she's got a okay. PhD in Arabic, yeah. and his father is a native speaker with a PhD in Arabic. And his mother, his stepmother, she writes me and she said, I'm so embarrassed that we both speak Arabic <laughs> and here we, we send our son and he doesn't uh, do well. And she gave me uh, the, this expression in, in the email, you know, what, what do you call the, the person that fixes shoes? A cobbler. All right. A cobbler without, a going without shoes. Oh, yeah. And that is the same saying in Arabic. Huh. So, and yeah. How do you say it in Arabic? Uh, you say, Skafi hafi. A cobbler that who fixes shoes is going without any shoes. The Skafi hafi. Because he doesn't take care of his own, he this, just takes care of everyone else. Look, right, right. Skafi so, hafi. Skafi is the cobbler? Then? Cobbler. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And hafi is without shoes. <laughs> so, That's yeah. That's cool. Well, as long as we're speaking Arabic here, um, give us a couple uh, greetings that we can use. Like if somebody just wants to say hello and they don't know what country you're from, what's a good way to say that? The, the good one that works all the time and it's, it's kind of formal, but that's okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And the response is wa alaikum as -salam. All right. Wa alaikum as -salam. Yeah. And ba literal translation, peace be with you. And the response, and upon you be peace. Okay. Informal, you can say marhaban, marhaban, which is hello, hi, yeah. marhaban, That's true. and the and the response would be marhabtin, marhabtin, which is in Arabic. That's the dual of one marhaba. Ah. So they always will outdo you, no matter what you say. They come up with even a better thing. So they're saying two hellos back to you. I remember living in the Middle East, how how generous people were. They were just always trying to give you things. <laughs> And, and with their language even. I mean, they yeah. always want to make sure that if you say something nice, they will come back with something that yeah, nice. it's <laughs> nicer that you kind of feel like, oh, I don't deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. How do you say, welcome to Texas? Ahlan wa sahlan fi Texas. Ahlan wa sahlan fi Texas. And let me... Or be Texas in some places. Yeah, you can say that. And ahlan wa sahlan, this is really a beautiful expression. Ahl is an extended family. Mm. That's, ah, that's what ahl translates to. Okay. Sahl is a flat land that you can grow anything in there. Yeah. So when you tell someone ahlan wa sahlan, you're saying you're among your family oh. and make yourself at home. We've got oh, that's so we, nice. we have plenty of things. Plant your crops. This, everything here is, you know, we've got plenty of it, and you're among families. Ah, so. I never knew what that meant. <laughs> yes, that, that's the literal translation for Ahl and Seth. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're, we're almost out of time, but I see that you brought some souvenirs um, yeah. from your time uh, working for the state of Texas. Can you show us? Absolutely. Big and heavy. <laughs> state of Texas, 1836. Yes. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. You know, I have a friend that came to visit me and I took him down to the capital and he was going through all these, uh, what do you call, monuments for these Texans that yeah. fought in the Civil War, right. I guess, and all the stories behind him. And I told him, you know, there's no fight. And he said, you guys in Texas are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's history. When you read about these, yeah. we have them. And then I got a watch, a surprise watch from uh, ACC, Austin Community College, after 20 years with them. So I never stayed long enough to get anything from the foreign language department. I can go back, right? What, how many years did you work for them? I think I was um, teaching there part-time four or five years. Yeah? Yeah. They, they'll take you uh, right now if you want to go back. <laughs> Are they, there always openings? <laughs> the, yes. They would love to have you back, I know. So anyway, but I, that is... And the flag? And the flag. This is the, when I retired from the uh, 
state of Texas. I actually got the flag that the Texas flag that flew over the capital the day of my retirement. That's cool. Is, so it's a different flag course. every day? Yeah, I think so. And we actually, you had to put in a request, I think. You had to put it ahead of time before you know, reserve that flag. Reserve that flag. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't get it till a few weeks after I retired, actually. So that's that was cool. that was nice. That was nice. So um, closing thoughts. Uh, do you think Texas is a good place for people, no matter where they're from? I. What kind of personality does well in Texas? Yes, uh, uh, engaging people. In yeah. Texas, that's how I describe them. Mm-hmm. They they talk to you. They engage immediately. They're you, uh, every you know. Like I said, I lived in. I went several places, and I always love coming back to Texas because you, wherever you go, you'll find somebody that wants to talk. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't matter, and 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 they're always nice. I I like that kind of living. You know. Uh, your neighbors are nice. You you know you go to even if you don't. They always giving you advice, whether it's good or bad. So <laughs> it, it, you, you have to make sure that you make sure that Just you, not in smile. you, 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 yes, you <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it, but you gotta be careful. But they're willing. They're willing to help. Any you know, and cool. I like the way that their style of living, the the barbecue, the uh, you know the free. You know, so, so so not their style, but our style. Our style of living. It is. You it are is, a Texan. It, it now. is. It is our style. It yeah. really is. I mean, I you know my Lucchese uh, boots and my even things that you don't want when you live in Texas, they happen to you, mm-hmm. like a beer belly. <laughs> like, like I have a beer belly and I don't drink beer. <laughs> it's just natural progression. It's, it's, yes. So you have cowboy boots and you have your beer belly, you're, you're, you fit right in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, shukran jazeelan. I enjoyed it. Afwan, afwan. It's wonderful to see you again. Ma'asalam. And have the discussion. Ma'asalam. Thank you so much for being here. You bet. You bet. <laughs>